An American Marriage by Tyere Jones. Roy, there are two kinds of people in the world, those who leave home and those who don't. I'm a proud member of the first category. My wife, Celestial, used to say that I'm a country boy at the core. But I never cared for that designation. For one, I'm not from the country per se. Elo, Louisiana, is a small town. When you hear country, you think raising crops, baling hay, and milking cows. Never in my life have I picked a single cotton ball, although my daddy did. I've never touched a horse, goat, or pig, nor have I any desire to. Celestia used to laugh, clarifying that she's not saying I'm a farmer, just country. She's from Atlanta, and there was a case to be made that she's country too. But let her tell it, she's a southern woman, not to be confused with the southern belle. For some reason, Georgia Peach is all right with her, and it's all right with me. So there you have it. Celestial thinks of herself as this cosmopolitan person, and she's not wrong. However, she sleeps each night in the very house she grew up in. I, on the other hand, departed on the first thing smoking, exactly 71 hours after high school graduation. I would have left sooner, but the trailways didn't stop through Elo every day. By the time the mailman brought my mama the cardboard tube containing my diploma, I was all moved in to my dorm room at Morehouse College, attending a special program for first-generation scholarship types. We were invited to show up two and a half months before the legacies to get the lay of the land and bone up on the basics. Imagine 23 young black men watching Spike Lee's School Days and Sidney Portier's To Sir With Love on loop. <laughs> and you either will or will not get the picture. Indoctrination isn't always a bad thing. All my life, I have been helped by leg up programs. Head start when I was five and upward bound all the way through. If I ever have kids, they will be able to pedal through life without training wheels. But I like to give credit where it's due. Atlanta is where I learned the rules and learned them quick. No one ever called me stupid. But home isn't where you land. Home is where you launch. You can't pick your home any more than you can choose your family. In poker, you get five cards. Three of them you can swap out, but two are yours to keep. Family and native land. I'm not talking bad about Elo. Obviously, there are worse native lands. A big picture mind can see that. For one, Elo may be in Louisiana, not a state brimming with opportunity, but it is located in America. And if you're going to be black and struggling, the United States is probably the best place to do it. However, we were not poor. Let me make that extra strength clear. My daddy worked too hard at Buck's Sporting Goods by day plus handymanning in the evenings, and my mother spent too many hours fixing trays at the meat and three for me to act like we had neither pot nor window. Let the record show that we had both. Me, Olive, and Big Roy were a family of three. We lived in a sturdy brick house on a safe block. I had my own room, and when Big Roy built an extension, I had my own bathroom. When I outgrew my shoes, I never waited for new ones. While I have received financial aid, 
My parents did their part to send me to college. Still, the truth is that there was nothing extra. If my childhood were a sandwich, there would be no meat hanging off the bread. We had what we needed and nothing more. And nothing less, Mama would have said, and then wrapped me in one of her lemon drop hugs. When I arrived in Atlanta, I was under the impression that I had my whole life ahead of me. Endless reams of blank paper. And you know what they say, a Morehouse man always has a pen. Ten years later, my life was at its sweet spot. When anybody said, where are you from? I said, the A. So intimate with the city that I knew her by her nickname. When asked about my family, I talked about Celestial. We were properly married for a year and a half, and we were happy for that time. At least I was. Maybe we didn't do happy like other people, but we're not your garden variety, bulgarious Atlanta Negroes where the husband goes to bed with his laptop under his pillow and the wife dreams about her blue box jewelry. I was young hungry, and on the come up. Celestial was an artist, intense and gorgeous. We were like love Jones, but grown. What can I say? I always had a weakness for shooting star women. When you're with them, you know that you're deep into something. None of that high and buy stuff. Before Celestial, I dated this other girl, also born and raised in the A. This girl, as proper as you can picture, she pulled a gun on me at an Urban League gala. I'll never forget that silver 22 with a pink mother of pearl handle. She flashed it inside her purse under the table where we were enjoying steak and agratine potatoes. She said she knew I was cheating on her with some chick from the Black Bar Association. How can I explain this? I was scared. And then I wasn't. Only an Atlanta girl could be so classy while doing something so hood. It was love logic. Granted. But I wasn't sure if I should propose or call the police. We broke up before daybreak and it wasn't my decision. After Pistol Girl, I lost my touch with the ladies for a minute. I read the news the same as anyone, and I heard about some supposed black man shortage. But it seemed that the good news had yet to make an impact on my social life. Every woman I took a shine to had someone else waiting in the cut. A little competition is healthy for all parties involved, but Pistol Girl's departure got up my skin like jiggers and sent me to Elo for a few days to talk things over with Big Roy. My father has this Alpha Omega way about him, like he was here before you showed up and he would be sitting in his same recliner chair long after you left. You don't want no woman that brandish a firearm, son. I tried to explain that what made it remarkable was the contrast between the streetness of the pistol and the glitter of the evening. Besides, she was playing, Daddy. Big Roy nodded and sucked the foam from his glass of beer. If that's how she plays, what's going to happen when she gets mad? From the kitchen, as though speaking through a translator, my mother called, Ask him who she's with now. She might be crazy, but she's not crazy. Nobody would dismiss little Roy without somebody on the back bench. Big Roy asked, your mother wants to know who she is with now. Like we're all speaking English. Some attorney dude, not like Perry Mason, contracts, a paperwork sort of person. Aren't you a paperwork person? Big Roy asked. Totally different, being a rep. That's temporary. Besides, paperwork isn't my destiny. It's just what I happen to be doing now. I see, Big Roy said. 
My mother was still peanut gallering from the kitchen. Tell him that he is always letting these light-skinned girls hurt his feelings. Tell him he needs to remember some of those girls right here in Allen Parish. Tell him to lift somebody up with him, Big Roy said. Your mother says, before I cut him off, I heard her, and didn't nobody say that girl was light-skinned. But of course she was, and my mama had a thing about that.